Ain't that beautiful? That's Briar Island, Nova Scotia. I'm Alex McDonald, and this is scotiapages.com. Let's take a walk down and find out what this town's all about. I started my tour of Briar Island with a short drive along the coast towards the village of Westport. I quickly realized that Briar Island is truly a unique place, located at the end of a peninsula called Digby Neck. The island is 7.5 kilometers long and 2.5 kilometers wide. But despite its small size, I can already tell it is filled with a warm character and charm all of its own. The drive through town reminds me that the island has a rich history that I am keen to learn more about. We're here with Laura Titus. Uh, she's a local historian here on Briar Island. And she's going to give us a little bit of history on uh, the island, but also about Josh West Locum. Welcome. Thank you. Um, I guess, yeah, well, first off, Briar Island, uh, the name Briar Island, where, where did all that come about? There's an interesting story about that. It is currently spelled B-R-I-E-R, -E and it's referring to the briar roses, which are all over the coastline, especially on the back shore of the island. And that's where most people thought that the, ro or the name Briar Island came from. And then it was discovered there was an old logbook from a ship in the 1600s, late 1600s. And apparently the ship pulled in to what is now P. Jack Cove on the back shore of the island, and they stopped for fresh water. And they came upon a native, an elderly native man lying in the cove. And the natives never lived on the island permanently. They just used it as a summer fishing base. And the elderly that probably wouldn't survive another winter were just left in the peaceful atmosphere of Briar Island to stay and, and pass away in comfort. And so when he uh, came ashore, he found the man there and he christened him as Peter Jackson. And this captain, his name was Captain Briar, which was spelled B-R-Y-E-R. -E and if you see old maps from pre-1870, Briar Island is spelled with the Y. And they think that that is how it originally got its name. And now that cove, incidentally, used to be Peter Jackson Cove, and it's been shortened through the years, and now it's called P. Jack Cove. If you go into the Hilltop Cemetery, you'll find a lot of Loyalists who have, were buried there. And their descendants remain today, but their last names are spelled a little different. Even the Joshua Slocum family name was changed he, by Slocum himself. He actually changed the spelling to the way the, the name Slocum sounds. Um, originally it was S-L-O-C-O-M-B-E and then it, you can see it in the Hilltop Cemetery. Joshua Slocum's mother, Sarah, is buried there and her gravestone says wife of John Slocum, S-L-O-C-O-M-B, without the E, but Joshua Slocum is S-L-O-C-U-M. His mom was from here. Uh, her name was Sarah Southern. In the Southern family, 
were the lighthouse keepers for generations of Western Lighthouse, and also they took care of Peter's Island Lighthouse, which is out in the harbor. Yeah. So she grew up the daughter of a lighthouse keeper, and then she married John Slocum, who was from Mount Hanley in the Annapolis Valley on the North Mountain. Joshua was born there. He did attend his first year or two of school there, and then they moved here, and the boot shop right over there. He, he wasn't in school for, for a long period of time, as many boys in those days. They didn't really have the luxury it was to have a full education because so many had to work to help out the families. So he went in and, and helped make leather boots for fishermen, and he really did not like the job whatsoever. He would just daydream about the sea, and he loved to hear the boats that would sail in and hear stories of the crew from those, where they'd been around the world, and all these different ports. After his voyage, uh, which took three years, he, he stopped at Briar Island when he left Boston in his sloop, the Spray, after he had repaired it and had it all ready for the voyage. This was his first stop, and he visited with old school friends and childhood friends, and did a little bit of painting on, on his boat. And uh, then after the voyage, three years later, he returned and he did a lantern slideshow for the locals. And a f it's been about 15 years ago that this particular resident here passed away at age 103. But when she was a little girl, she remembers going to see that show with her mom and seeing Joshua Slocum. Wow, and really actually meeting the man. And mm -hmm. in that would be in the, in the, the late 1890s. 1763, uh, Joshua Welch, and I believe David Morrow, they were Maine fishermen, and they discovered just the place was just teeming with fish. And they said, we'll come back here. And they went back and got their families. Joshua came and settled first, and it was his son, David Welch, who was the first person born here. And then the Morals came, and then there were three or four more families who came. They settled down in the southern end of the island on the harbor, sheltered from the northerly winds. And then the Loyalists arrived in 1783-84, and they tended to have, a lot of them, a bit more prosperity to bring with them, and their houses were larger, and they got land in the center of the, of the island, and it ended up, for some reason, that they called this end Irish Town. Of course, they had larger families in those days, and some of the houses are your basic salt box style, and then there are a few uh, Gothic Revival style that you might have noticed, and then there are some in the more northern side of the island, which there are two stories on the front, but if you were to go to the back, they would, you would see only one story because they actually dug into the hill, and that saves on heating. And there are a few houses uh, on the northern part of the village of Westport, which are, are built like that. And my grandmother's is one of them. Hers was built by Timothy Tileston Payson, who was a son of Elisha Payson Esquire, who was the first person that built a ship on Briar Island. Really? Mm -hmm. And the, the house of Timothy's, the what's the living room now, the, the ceiling is really interesting. It's done in beams that are replicas of the ceiling on the interior of one of his father's ships. What a fascinating history Briar Island has. My next stop was to meet and chat with a local businesswoman and owner of one of the island's most beautiful homes. the history with this place? Well, actually, it dates back to the early 1800s, 
and um, I'm told years ago it was owned by a doctor. And actually when my dad was a young boy, there was two sisters that lived here, and the house was heated by coal. And he used to come over in the morning and stoke up the coal furnace for these two ladies for 10 cents a week. 10 cents a week. And my dad lived to be 92, so if that goes to show you just, you know, that's a little bit of history, how far back it goes in, in my, my family anyway. You also uh, do a whale watching and seabird tours. Yes. And uh, what's that all about? Actually, uh, in 1994, my husband and I started a company called Mariner Cruises Whale and Seabird Tours. And we take uh, visiting guests out to enjoy our natural wonders of the Bay Fundy. And it includes whales, dolphins, harbor porpoise, and a variety of pelagic birds. And our seals, we have lots of seals around the island, seal colonies, large seal colonies, which are home to gray seals and harbor seals year-round. Wow, there's a cluster of things around here, isn't there? Like cluster of things. The whole island is actually made of calmer basalt, dates back to the Triassic period 200 million years ago. The island is actually four miles long by a mile and a half wide. And our current population rate at the moment is around 200 residents. But in the early 1900s, it was over, well over 1,200. Thanks for staying at the end and sailing with us. We appreciate it. I to nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Thanks for staying at the end. Thank you. Um, Loved it. Well, how was it? Really good, was it? Yeah, it wasn't bad at all. It was wonderful. Oh, excellent. Did you see a lot of whales? Though, a lot of yes, we did. Lots. Bye -bye. Really? Thank you. Thank you. Sure. At least it. At least six or eight. Good evening, Mr. Field. Oh, excellent. We've got some awesome pictures. Nice so you did, you'd definitely do it again? Yep. Excellent. I would. <laughs> got the tail standing up there. Really? Yep. Oh, good, good, good. good. Yeah. Excellent. It's been a great day. Lots of whales. Yep. Lots of happy customers. Lots of happy oh, yeah. customers. It was good. These passengers certainly had a great time. And I get the feeling that a visit to Briar Island would not be complete without taking a trip with Mariner Cruises. My next visit was to stop off at the grand opening of a new gift shop. Um, I just want to thank everyone for coming. Um, this is a brand new adventure for me, and actually it's a brand new adventure for the community, I think. <laughs> to be so lucky to be in the Joshua Slocum's father's boot shop, to expand my business, and just to have the support of the community, it means a lot. And I just want to thank you. It's now that I can really feel and see the community spirit in action. This historic building and now the gift shop that operates here are a real source of pride to this island. And locals are not afraid to come, show their support, and have some fun. Vicki Graham also operates Hooking by the Sea Retreats, where she offers a truly hands-on tourism experience. We recently joined her on her annual Wild and Wooly Weekend, during which she takes her guests step by step through the old-fashioned process of sheep shearing, skirting the wool, washing the wool, needle felting, right through to hooking the wool. A weekend with Vicki will not only teach you about our history, but also let you live a small part of it. <laughs> 